Yo guys, it's Sam, and today we're gonna to be testing the iPhone XS against the iPhone X. Now, there's marginal improvements across the board, but especially if you have an older iPhone, Apple's boasting a lot of big performance improvements with this year's 12 megapixel sensor. You have better portrait mode, better rear and front facing video, and something they're calling Smart HDR. So we're gonna put it all to the test right now. So Smart HDR is one of the features I've been most excited to test because Apple is basically combining a range of images. So super exposed, super underexposed, lots of things in the middle to create this sort of perfect image where everything in the background looks perfectly lit and then everything in the foreground like your subject a person an object will also look perfectly lit as well and while the feature isn't perfect after using it for just a little bit I can tell you like I, I noticed the improvements on the iPhone at 10s take a look at these photos uh, from the iPhone 10 comparing it to the iPhone at 10s especially with the detail when there's a ton of light coming in the background you see a ton of detail on the object that I have in the foreground but also a lot of detail is preserved in the background as well, which is something that the iPhone 10 and iPhones in the past have definitely struggled with. So I've noticed that immediately. Also just in general, being able to properly or better expose things that are super bright in the background and balancing that with what's in front of the camera directly is also better. Again, it's not perfect. It's not gonna be the best experience, maybe as good as some DSLRs on the market, but it's definitely an improvement this year and it's something that I've picked up on. Right here is a perfect example of where the iPhone 10s really shines. So we're in a relatively dark environment right now. It's not crazy crazy bright inside of here, but outside of this little pavilion, it's really bright because the sun is shining directly down on the grass, on the trees. And when I was shooting against this wall, take a look at these two photos. You'll notice that while the iPhone XS, again, it doesn't do the perfect job of exposing the background and the foreground, it totally destroys the iPhone 10. With the iPhone 10, you really can't see much detail in the background. And with the iPhone XS, you can, and that's really cool. Now where you're also gonna notice the smart HDR improvements on the iPhone XS is with video. I feel like it's definitely more dramatic with photos, it's not as pronounced, but even in these side-by-side -side comparison videos, I do notice things being more blown out in general when there's a lot of light in the background on the iPhone 10 video versus video on the iPhone 10s. Now, I'm not really trying to shoot anything in particular right now, but the iPhone 10s has stereo audio. So if you can hear the difference, this is the audio coming directly from the iPhone 10 from 2017. This is my voice speaking. Uh, it sounds good until you hear this. Now, again, it's not like studio quality. I don't want you to expect the greatest audio that you've ever heard, but here on the iPhone 10s, you can definitely tell a difference. I like the way it sounds. It's good, and I think it's definitely an upgrade from last year. All right, guys, so now we're testing the front-facing video and stabilization. One thing I'm noticing immediately is while the iPhone XS is able to keep everything in the background relatively properly exposed, like it's still a little bit blown out, the 10 is absolutely destroying the background. Like just look up here, uh, if I go ahead and turn around like this, Look at the difference, especially in the sky and the way detail is preserved. Totally different story on the 10s. it looks really great. Apple also says that front-facing video stabilization is better this year, and I mean, I'm walking. This is using the, the built-in iPhone camera audio. Um, I've got one arm on the camera, one hand free, so it, it would be relatively shaky normally. And um, I mean, it looks a little bit better on the 10s, but it's still pretty shaky. I'm just glad that Apple didn't apply like a fake motion stabilization because i've always found that really really strange but this year especially when you when i go up towards the sky look at the loss of detail on the 10 especially because the sun is like right there uh, it's it's a pretty remarkable change and definitely something i think is going to make most photos that would have been really blown out definitely usable and pretty good something really cool that we just tested that i didn't think would actually work was motion while you're taking a photo so at apple's keynote they had mentioned you know if you're in the middle of action if you're jumping if you're riding a bike and you're moving really quickly the iphone 10s will be able to better select that frame to make the key frame rather than just including it all in a jumbled live photo that you have to go through later. And take a look at these photos right here. Not only was the iPhone XS able to take the photos faster than the iPhone 10 that's only a year old, it was able to select that better frame right off the bat, even though we tried to capture it at the same time. Uh, sometimes my legs were blurry, sometimes my body was blurry because the 10 just couldn't get it, but I'm blown away by this. I didn't think that the iPhone XS would actually be that big of an upgrade for motion, but like I'm here and it definitely looks incredible. So I was able to record most of my thoughts about photos and videos on the fly because I noticed the changes immediately and they were pretty apparent. But when it came to portrait mode, it just was not that easy. I had to go back to my computer and really pull these images up and take a look at them, dissect them one by one. And I realized 
Honestly, the portrait mode upgrades from the iPhone 10 or like the iPhone 8 Plus to the iPhone 10s aren't that apparent. The biggest change that I've noticed is the fact that it's more of a soft blur around you in some cases. And I think that looks okay. A lot of the times the problems that I ran into with the iPhone 10 was the fact that if it missed your head or a part of your head shape, it would totally just like draw a line almost between blur and non-blur. This year it's a little bit more smooth, but at the same time it's not totally apparent like I can still kind of tell most of these images were shot on an iPhone and it depends on your lighting and what you're shooting and what people look like and if we flip over to see a portrait selfie I still don't think that these are very good at all I didn't like them with the iPhone 10 the edges never really worked for my face and on the iPhone 10s I think it's better but it does that same soft blur effect around you if it doesn't know if that's the background or if that's the side of your head where it needs to stop the blur. It's a work in progress and I think for the average person like portrait mode is a, a big feature that a lot of people like. So if you're coming from a phone without portrait mode know that it's really good on the iPhone XS. I just think it could be better in some regards especially when it decides and where it decides to add the actual blur or stop it. Here's a unique feature on the new iPhone XS that you can't do natively on the iPhone 10. Let's say I took this image in portrait mode. You can adjust the f-stop in post to either add less blur, blur or more more blur in the background. So f16 obviously not going to be that much blur, but if you go all the way down to something like f1.4, it's crazy. Like it looks a little bit fake to me. I don't think portrait mode is perfect. And even in this image you can see around the edges, it's not perfect on this camera. Like it doesn't nail it, but it looks good, and I think it does look better than the iPhone X, even if it's only a marginal change. All right, so that is your look at the brand new camera on the iPhone XS. The XS Max has the exact same version, so whether you choose the XS or the XS Max, these are some of the results you should expect to see. If you enjoyed the video, drop a like, let me know your thoughts down below, and of course, you should subscribe for more videos in the future. I've been Sam, I hope you're doing great, and I'll talk to you in my next video.